What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 47 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Archeon the Everchosen Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, Norvegicus the Censor Bearer, after many a trial it's achieved Demon Princehood. His trials were not at an end however as the uh, uh, the forces of the Tomb Kings, the Cameron Tomb Kings in particular, and decided to take the opportunity to wipe the flood demon prince out uh, before he could really come into his own especially as the army got that much weaker and due to the levels unfortunately for them uh, they failed and uh, he's looking pretty good uh, he's got iron skin giving him additional armor which apparently he does need as the armor on the nerglide demon prince appears to be relatively low and the unit mass is also helpful sadly we did indeed lose regeneration and the rest of this was kind of meh um, but at the end of the day it would probably Probably won't matter all that much. He's still going to be uh, physically stronger than his mortal form. Uh, we also took out one of the enemy armies of uh, the bloody hands here with the Nerath Magoth. Can remember this guy's name? And huh, it's only eighteen. If we wanted to, we could send him to. A demon of under oh no it requires level 30 unlike level 20s all right well somebody else will probably reach that sooner than you will but anyway uh what do we get to do this time well we certainly do have to fight Wurzag. let's start at the top and move Archeon first and then continue where we left off now Archie I guess what we'll do is we'll send Vashnar here to occupy Needling and then Archeon can move near it and then take Krugenheim Got to take two at a time, otherwise it's going to take forever. Uh, you go here, you go here. The outer resolve will likely hurt our giants. Hopefully not as much as it... Nah, eh, so not bad. I mean, it, it really shouldn't have even hurt them anywhere. And how did you lose four aspiring champions to this nonsense? Okay. Uh, but anyway, I occupy the place. You gotta do what you gotta do, and then don't bother with that Iron Curse icon. Hopefully we can turn it into something useful to Krugenheim. Here you go, I guess, in the summoning stance as well. Honestly, maybe we should have two lords following Archeon around, because uh, he can probably take three settlements a turn if he really tried. Occupy. And, ooh, another Talisman of Preservation. That's real nice. Uh, I think we got one, just to double check. Oh no, you have a Talisman of Endurance. Oh, well, that's fantastic. We'll get you the Talisman of Preservation then. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. We got a lot of these over the course of the uh, campaign, but weirdly enough, very few armors. We only have two armors of destiny and several tricksters helms. It's odd. I don't think I've ever had that happen before, but uh, look at the draw sort of thing. It's not that I'm complaining. Anyway, Azazel and Glugmir. Azazel, you're going to need to move here. We'll occupy the Floating Pyramid and with Glugmir, and then see if we can catch Chong Huo uh, with Azazel, though I fear we won't be able to. Out of resolve, this is probably going to hurt the chariots. Of course it is. <laughs> because it always will. Occupy. But I guess we have to chase this little army around, so that doesn't change things all that much. Now, I assume... Oh, man, we have to figure out where this guy's going to go. Oh, we can reach him, but he'll run. Eh, nonetheless. That's all our territory now, so it's, it's still good. All right, he's going to back up, and he's probably going to try to head to the Isle of the Crimson Skull or the uh, Respect Azuma here. He won't be able to reach the Floating Pyramid, though, which is fine. Uh, you're going to go into Encamp Stance, heal up a little bit more, try to get those chariots back up and running. Daranata Resolve really doesn't like those. Gulator, you are in range of this little army, and I'm willing to bet from previous experience that they will indeed attempt to fight you. Bad idea on their part. Ooh, you have Standard Die. Okay, I guess we got Standard Die. Bad idea on their part, and we'll certainly take advantage. And what the heck is this? Mentor automatically granted at rank 40. Oh, this is a change. I didn't even... Huh, wait. Now, this is a change from the 
previous versions of the mod. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I like the fact that we don't have to use points on it anymore, though, sadly. In this campaign, we won't have recovered the points that they originally cost. But I do like that. Though I suppose it is unfortunate that we start at rank 40 and then on to 45 and 50 and have nothing at rank 30, so it'll be a while until we get there. But still, I do like the change. Uh, we don't need the XP in this army, so we are going to keep on leveling you, sir. Let's get you... Mm, let's get your heart to hit first. We'll get pissed on the Perseverance afterwards. Yeah. It's not like we were expecting the exalted heroes of Nurgle to ever die or get badly hurt, frankly. Not unless their entire army is in similarly bad shape. Uh, you, Gilator, are going to go after this guy. I fear he will run, and I fear we won't be able to catch him this turn, but that's okay. Oh, he might come after us with multiple armies. Unless he doesn't run because he thinks Gilator's army is weak because it's full of Forsaken. And indeed he does, a Pyrrhic of victory. Well, the Greenskins apparently have not yet learned their lesson in facing off against the Plague Poet. Let's teach them another. The Plague Father makes it so indeed. Oh, Galator, I missed your speeches. Here we go, we're going to get a battle with him at, well, maybe not long last, but, uh, yeah, we're gonna get a battle with him, and as usual, the Frolicking Buboniker's will lead the way, smashing into a line of Black Orcs. Now, this seems like a horrifically bad matchup for the Frolicking Buboniker's, but as usual, they will be, a, they will be using that upgrade Curse of the Leper, massively upgrading their armor, which actually isn't all that useful against the uh, um, Black Orcs, but the damage reflection is going to hurt. Let's watch that HP bar on the Black Orcs. There we go. It's dropping just about as much as that of the Frolicking Bubonicers is. And I'm sure the Plague of Nurgle in combination with that lethal poison ain't doing too great for them as well. And very nice, very nice. And of course, while these guys are distracting the enemy, our main army remains on the approach. Uh, we will keep these guys hopefully healed up. I mean, we've put them into the most dangerous situation in every single battle with Gulator's army, and they have always survived, so we can trust to the adorable little Nurglings. Anyway, here come the Forsaken and the Chaos Spawn working together as they do that classic super effective combination, well, at the very least, super effective combination for its cost. I'm sure will do wonders for us, as it usually does, and especially with uh, Gulator in the lead, or at command, in command, there we go. And looks like a fleshy abundance has actually managed to keep the uh, frolicking Bubonikers very nice and healthy, and the Black Orcs that charge them are in pretty bad shape. The enemy is repeatedly spawning units on the field, however, adding more bodies to the fray. In the form of those bony boys aplenty, but that's all right. It's just more things for uh, the grandfather to bless. We got 25k damage on uh, the Frolickers, or the Frolicking Bubonikers. 26k, damn, these guys are doing great. I think we might actually be getting more... Yeah, Dean's Pure down to 9k, that's insane. <laughs> But maybe using them in the way that we've been using them is quite effective indeed. Now the enemy does have a big boy here, a, a unit of, a unit of, an arachnorock spider has arrived. We did immediately send our uh, pet, uh, our pet manticores to try to hunt it down. It's down about half HP, but it is still working. Otherwise, it's just a big old brawl, and we're going to have to outlast the enemy and the wa that is now moving onto the field. Quite a few enemies here to contend with, and we do have to be careful with our doggos. If we uh, look at them over on uh, this side, they have started to take damage. Not a crazy amount of damage. These guys, I believe, were going to... were chasing something around, but have now stopped and can return to the foray here. Should have started moving. 
Or they will start moving as soon as I notice that they are no longer chasing something. Off screen, that Arachnorok spider is broken. Despite being in half HP, which works for us. But otherwise we have to continue to hold. Just to, I'm just curious now. 146 of 47 kills on the Nurglings now and 35k damage. I gotta say, I'm pretty darn impressed. How, how are the Demon Spew doing? Up to 115k. There we go. They're starting to catch up. And we have started to take damage on several of our spawn, both of this unit and this unit. This one is down a single spawn at about 40% of its HP, though having done decent damage. Not compared to the Frolicking Bubonikers, perhaps, but decent nonetheless. Anyway, this unit is moving here to be close to the failed experiments, so that we can heal both at once. And there we go, he come, the Locus of Fecundity comes down. That was a very weird way to say that. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, it comes down, like the, the spell comes down, it's just, never mind. Anyway, uh, the battle continues, though by the looks of it, not for too much longer, as the bounce bear is at about 70% in our favor now, and the big old blob of orcs that had originally surrounded us completely has collapsed almost completely on the left flank. There is a few units remaining here that are fighting uh, Gulatork himself, but him and the troops that he's leading are having no trouble whatsoever due to the uh, consistency and heals there. A little bit more of an issue over on the sun and on the flank here without Gulator's uh, giver of Nurgulus glory, pestilent glory, whatever the Nurgulite healing form is. Um, but we do have the Locus of Fecundity and the constant casting coming in from uh, Gulator as well, so everybody is still receiving some kinds of heals. You do have to watch out for the animations of the Chaos Spawn, carrying them too deep into the enemy formation. Always a danger with your monstrous infantry and monstrous units, as they can otherwise be surrounded. And the Chaos Spawn are still a relatively, relatively fragile unit, although perhaps doesn't quite apply as much to the Nurglite Spawn in particular. 13k HP, 44 melee attacks, kind of. It's a, a 43 melee defense, rather, is okay. I'm 73 melee attack, though. Plus, they got a regen. Could use a little bit more armor, perhaps, but. Looks like they did fine. Even the one that reached 40% of its HP will hopefully have healed up nicely. And there we go. 190 kills in 43k. And it looks like something is still fighting. It's probably a bony boy. Yeah, I gotta wait until these guys crumble away. I'm not entirely sure what the heck they're doing. But with that, the battle is ours. As always, very, very nice work to Gulator and his spawn and Forsaken. All right, very nice indeed. All, all as always, fantastic work uh, from a uh, Gulator. We'll sacrifice the captives since our war shrine, not war shrines, the uh, shrines of chaos now cost us 130k, I think, to build each, which is quite a bit. Uh, so if we want a few more, we may want to. Yes, 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 yes devotion, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we may want to actually. Uh, uh, be able to get them. Uh, let's also move you. Hmm, if we move you here, we may actually get attacked by multiple armies at once. Ooh. In fact, they could all attack uh, Gulator at the same time. Just in case, we're probably better off going into summoning stance. We can't reach this guy anyway. So we'll stay here, maybe near to Talibim. A few reinforcements there. Gulator... Kultur's army could probably hold, but uh, if it gets attacked by like four armies at once, we may, just in case, want to uh, uh, have a few more units in there. I uh, believe we have all the good upgrades, at least for this army, or at least all the upgrades that we want for this army. Other than, I guess, for the Frolicking Bubonikers, which still haven't died. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I should, uh, maybe they just won't. Uh, magical reserves for you, sir. 
Actually, you know what? We do use stream of corruption in this army quite a bit. I still don't like rancid visitations and miasma pestilences are fine and usable, so we'll get another point in that next. Alrighty, good job to Gulatur Kolek. You're next. Let's start moving towards the Monument of the Moon. And see if we can reach it with you. Uh, sail to the wreck. We cannot resolve this. Probably hurt our army unnecessarily, but once again, it is what it is. Let's see if we can't get a nice reward. Actually, materials... Oh, 130k for a shrine with materials at sea. Damn. Things be expensive. Uh, Kolek. You can, in fact, reach this by the looks of it. So what we'll do is this. Arbal, you'll head to the Monument of the Moon. We've already defeated Mazdamundi, like, a bunch of times. But we can certainly get his defeat trait on Arbal here. If we can move Kolek in to reinforce. So go here. Kolek will land. And, oh, he, he can't build any troops other than skinks anymore. But hey, at least they win in adorableness, so, you know, still good. Please land here, Kolek. I'm not going to bother leveling it because this should be auto-resolvable, I imagine. Yes, it will. All right, just destroy this. I'm good. I was worried for a second that the auto-resolve would lie there, but it didn't occupy, please. All right, and with that, the lizards fall. Yes, yes, spawn killer, that's what we wanted. Faction-wide spell resistance. Always glorious. And there we go. Fare thee well, Hexawaddle. An ignominy ascend for you as well, especially since we didn't want to uh, and go after you again after while well, defeating you so many times. All right, and that was Kolek, who's next on the field. Kukar, you were actually drilling here. I'm going to quickly subjugate the altar of facades. This is not worth fighting. Yeah, and we will subjugate you. Nice. All right, sort of ant hero, student, yada, 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 all that is not relevant. And, huh. Wait, did the sort of ant heroes go to us or did it go to Drillin's army? I guess it doesn't really matter, but nonetheless. Uh, keep on moving, Kukar. And you've got places to conquer, and I guess you're going to follow Kukar for the for the nonce. Uh, we'll probably want to trade at the very least the Castle of Splendor to you. Mm. Yeah, might as well. Uh, pop you into exploit vassals, let's give you the Castle of Splendor. And I guess we could just get the trade agreement going. Earlier I was... Wait, do we need, to, do we need your money? We don't need your money. Keep your money. Keep your money. I still don't think you'll be useful, but keep your money nonetheless. Uh... What do you have at the... Oh, do you have anything useful here? No. I mean, I guess we could give him back Occam's Forever Maze, but I'm not going to do that, so... No. Uh, I guess we have to keep the Cultist Camp here as well, just because of the ludicrous cost of the shrines at this point. I mean, granted, it's because we built so many shrines that they all now cost insane amounts of cash, but, uh, well. Uh, you, Siggy, by the looks of it, cannot reach the guy in Vale in one bound. Well... Isn't that interesting? All right. Moving farther. A moment, wait. Can you do it in march stance? You cannot. You are at max movement range by the looks of it. So yeah, all right. Just cross on over. And I guess we'll defend towards Sarwar with this little army if it can be called such. Oh, actually, Sigvald's in range. Do we need to fight the battle at the Guy in Vale? Is the question. Uh. Well, it doesn't have the Ever Queen, but her defeat trade is garbage anyway, so it's nothing we really care. Uh, there's a bunch of Lothar and Sea Garden stuff there. It's certainly potential for a fight. Hmm. There's also potential for a massive desync, to be fair. Does the guy in Vale have uh, walls? It does indeed. Close victory, eh? I mean, it does have some Phoenix Garden white lions. Hmm. I'm to, to make the comparison between them and uh, other stuff we faced off against. Rather, make a comparison between the Coronate units and those guys. But anyway, uh, let's keep moving for now and then we'll figure out who to fight. Since we have to pick our battles this late into the campaign, can't have every battle after all. Where are you going to... Oh, oh, come on, come on, man. <laughs> this is not running so far. And... Really? Really? You know what? I'll do this one between the episodes. That's just, just stupid. That is a colossal waste of time. I know, I know that this army is, uh... Well... Hmm. I wonder. 
I wonder... Will this work? Wait. Who has the lowest level here? I guess it's you. Blood letters. Goodbye. Then we'll get another bloodthirster. There we go. Three bloodthirsters in here. Oh, and we still need that other exalted here. Now can we do this? No, one of the bloodthirsters will still die, or blood letters will still die. Damn you. All right, fine, fine, fine. Between the episodes, you shall go. Uh, village. On the approach. And get closer. Ever closer. Finally, uh, back to the uh, back to the orcs, though. They are dwindling in numbers now. Jaeger, you've got orcs of your own to declare out. Karek... Karek Ziflin? Yeah, Karek Ziflin. Hmm... Can you do this in summoning stance? Yes, you can, and we need to get you a uh, secondary lord to capture locations, don't we? Hmm. All right. Oh, look at that, Carl Franz. It's so weird to see him under the uh, uh, under the what you might call. Ooh, I maybe shouldn't have done that. Took a lot of damage. Uh, weird to see him sack and stop moving. Stop. Stop moving. Uh, see him under the flag of the Golden Order. Chaos Steed for you to carry Ziflin back and occupy. And then we will recruit a lord. Ooh. Risky. Oh, uh, no, not so risky. This army is all the way up here now. It was risky before, not as risky now. Uh, is there a Zinchin lord? Yes, there's a third eye of Zinch. Doesn't really matter who follows us, just to get a lord so that we can occupy territories. As in multiple territories in the same turn. Festus, you also have work to do, but we're going in order right now. The your order must be observed. Uh, you, Tamar Painbringer and Valkia. So Karenthel has decent defenders, Angariel does not. Meaning, we can send you to Angariel and have Valkia reinforce that and then hit Karenthel right after. And close defeat. Shame about that. Do this, and just to power up the auto resolve a teensy bit. Might even be able to take Port or one of the weaker territories by yourself afterwards. Would be nice. Uh, go for this. Auto resolve, yes. Alright, not too bad in terms of damage. Uh, Talisman of Protection, no. Occupy the place. Hmm. Sacking is worth a decent amount. Alright, fine, sack it. It's not like we can keep it for ourselves with, uh, with the stuff in it anyway. Why not? Talisman of Protection. To Angariel. And Occupy. All right, and we can't even make use of the wine here because of that darn port. All right, to Karen Thel, ye shall go. All right, and decisive victory as well. You're going to sack this for the XP. And then you're going to stop moving. Ah, so difficult to catch them when they do that. All right, and more or less going to heal to full, which means... Okay, well, actually... Hopefully you'll be able to take the Shrine of Assyrian and Port Elastor. I really don't want uh, Sigvald to have to come back around this way, as I'd like him to go this way and grab the gates and then... Yeah, Valkia to leave Ulthuan ASAP as well. We're running out of time. Campaign time, I mean. Anyway, uh, we get another Skull Crusher on the way, but not quite there yet. We can also upgrade the Chaos Warriors of Corn to Chosen, should we desire to do so. Though at the cost of losing all their armor, 232 armor down to 142. Man. Huh. I'm almost tempted to... I wonder what the performance comparison is. You know what? I'm going to keep the Chaos Warriors of Corn with dual weapons and the Chosen of Corn with dual weapons in this army. And I'm going to compare. And you know what? We'll keep you as well for now. I want to compare their performance against each other. How much of a difference does that extra 100 armor make? It's a massive amount of armor, though with, uh, against armor-piercing elites, it won't uh, make too much of a difference. I still find it very, very silly that it doesn't apply to a uh, Chosen, but uh, it's kind of the uh, level of to make an interesting comparison. Uh, Malefax are going to Shodel. I have to keep an eye on armies nearby, but we're looking okay so far. Uh, I'll resolve this for obvious reasons and sack it. Huh. I, I don't know what he said, but it, it sounded like he said Malefax to me, and I was shocked for a second. What's the likelihood that we can get Ricard to occupy Shodel? Low? Or existent? I don't know. We're, we'll keep you nearby, we'll encamp you, and we'll hope that uh, uh, Rikarth will move in to uh, grab it. I need another lord here. You know what? I probably should have summoned another lord out here, because we don't... This guy doesn't have any 
friendly territory. Well, he has friendly territories, but he doesn't have any of our own territories nearby. Anyway, Sam of Painbringer, I would like you to move here. You're going to probably kill off Mash One figure next turn, and then you, sir, are going this way. Oh, gotta send you up this ah, whatever, it doesn't matter. An Aerith Magoth. We've got a fight for you as well, potentially. I'm gonna start with this one, because I want to see if we can't make use of Astro Gruul Iron Pick. Whose name I still find hilarious. Mostly because it's you know, Astrogoth Iron Hand at home, but uh, yeah, a Nareth, we're gonna level in, we're gonna see if Rizag's willing to fight. I'm willing to bet he'll run, but uh, well, we shall see. Uh, Ruben a seal, hey, that's my favorite kind of seal. Let's get that for you. And then you are going to get Chaos Strategist. Not quite yet there to Stench Ridden, which is what we need the most, but yeah. Get Plague Father's Protection as well. And Arath, go into Summoning Stance. Hit Mr. Wurzag. Let's see if he fights or runs. He fights. Valiant defeat, you say. Ooh, interesting. I mean, granted that this army is not worth anything, and this army isn't really worth anything, but we got a lot of monsters in here. Uh, regardless of the fact that they have low, uh, low leadership, should be a fun fight. Go, go, go. Did he just say, I control chaos? Okay, you, you keep thinking that. <laughs> oh, okay, well, let me know how that works out for you. Anyway, here we go. Excited about this one. We got a big old Savage Orc stack arrayed against us, and these are the super-powered Savage Orcs under Wurzag himself. Uh, we have a lot of threatening units. They've got Bone Clubbers and Biggins, and those Savage Orc Boar Boy Biggins with 12. 20k HP. Damn, I didn't know how much HP these guys had. That's crazy. That's a lot of HP. Uh, twice as much as a troll, you know, I'm just curious. Uh, Marauders have 17k, but are also super fragile. Yeah, 75 melee attack, 164 charge, and 84 weapon strength. Damn. And of course, they've got 70% physical resistance. 70%. But that's uh, that's Wurzag for you. Uh, which is pretty crazy, actually, just out of curiosity. Uh, we have, again, once again, 50% on the Hounds of Decay. Damn, they actually out-physically resist the Hounds of Decay now. And they out-physically resist demons. Uh, pretty crazy. But anyway, uh, taking a little bit of time to set up our armies. If Wurzag isn't going to move towards us, we'll move the Gabos and the and our main army together. The Gabos and the monsters. I'm going to make sure that the Gabos act as fodder. We've also got a few units from our allies, or not from our allies, from our garrison. And uh, thus are going to make use of some of the Chaos War and marauders there in order to make sure that uh, we get the uh, buffs from those marauders. Now Wurzag for some reason has decided to peel away from his army by himself and we have five flyers, three manticores, one fly or then two flying lords so we are definitely going to uh, punish Wurzag for this. He is down to half HP already surrounded plague of rust and poison upon him. He's got nowhere to run and we will hunt him down. Going to even pop that flaming sword of ruin to make sure that we buff the manticores up and make sure that they're hitting as hard as they possibly can and bring in the dancer down. Very nice. Very nice. The rest of the battle has not yet engaged. Let's speed it up a teensy bit to drop a uh, fires of chaos up and a... And a Searing Doom upon that Goblin Rock Lobber, though. Ooh, look at that. The charge from the Savage Orc Boar Boy Biggins. And dropping our Chaos Warhounds. I have never seen them drop this fast. Down below half HP after their charge. And that's intense. And on top of that, due to their massive physical resistance and the fact that our Hounds also do magic or non-magical damage, they're going to have a very difficult time actually bringing any of the Boar Boys down. 26 kills, 27. 
of those doggos and 12k damage. All right, these guys are not to be underestimated and have got the second unit down to half HP as well, though the regular Savage Orc Biggins with their 70% physical resistance are going to be no slouches either. And this is going to be particularly interesting for this battle as well because most of our units that don't do magical damage. Now, a lot of this is probably going to be up to the uh, Mutilith Vortex base. Our monsters certainly don't do magical damage, and we're going to send our giants to try to hunt down that savage rogue idol, while we also try to hose it down with arrows from our uh, uh, from our fodder hobgobs. That said, we can't protect all the hobgobs, and it looks like the enemy will do some flanking. Some savage orc biggins and gobos and boys and bone clubbers are going to hit the uh, range units. That said, we don't care. Every single one of the hobgoblins can die. They're just here. Uh, to make the battle more epic. And damn, more of those uh, Orc Boar Boys and Savage Orc Boar Boy Biggins ripping more Hounds of Decay apart and actually sending them off field. And damn. I think that's two units over on the right flank of the Doggos off field, and then these guys are both below half HP. We gotta be careful about this. Keep dropping spells as much as we can on blobbed up Savage Orcs because we need the extra damage. Rogue Idol's down by about 25% HP, but the main lines are still engaged. Got to get through all that physical resistance and war paint. And best as we can. Chaos Warriors moving up the hill to join the trolls and such in battle. I do believe we had a few troll units route, but come back. But, well, that's trolls for you. Hardly surprising. And there we go, looks like several of our goblin units, or hobgoblin units, are on the route as well. Some fires of chaos coming down in the biggest blob of enemies that we can hit without hurting our own. And that savage rogue idol is still going to take more work. Crushing marauders beneath it even as the giants crush gobos. And dorks, I guess, beneath them as well. I hesitated on gobos because, well, we got plenty of our own hobgobs on the field. But frankly, us crushing our own hobgobs is just fine as well. Alright, Needle of Vortex Beast definitely working overtime in this pile of resistant units here. And let's see, we got 44 kills on you, but 18.5k damage. And this one's going to peel away to join the fray over here instead. Bounce of Power has shifted in our favor to about 80% now. And our Manticores are returning to the main portion of the battle. But of course our casters were dropping spells the entire time. So it's not like they weren't helping. And they were just busy protecting the flanks from those very dangerous boar boy biggins. There's another piercing bolt of burning coming down as the uh, titans clash in the middle of this formation. Though by the looks of it, with the arrival of the Manticores, we should be able to bring that savage, orc, ro savage rogue idol down all that much quicker. Plague of Rust drops its armor by 50, making everybody a little bit more effective, and everybody will focus it down to bring it down at last. Aw, they're kind of adorable how they look confused when they start, uh, uh, they start crumbling away. Like, it looks at its arm and it's gone. It's like, go oh, what? Poor little guy. All right. Alright, well, either way, uh, that is that for Wurzag's Bower, for Wurzag's stack. He gave us a heck of a fight, however, and uh, yeah, particularly those poor doggos. The gobos did die in droves by the looks of it, but they allowed, through their sacrifice, us to keep the HP on most of our monstrous units, and we're certainly going to need that as we got more of these armies to fight. All right, very nice, very nice. That certainly worked out, and it is just so nice to have fodder units available to us. They didn't serve too much in the way of a damage purpose-wise. Oh, oh, well, this hobgoblin wolf rider got decent damage, probably after the uh, uh, probably after the battle is over when they were chasing stuff down. But yeah, it's nice to have fodder. The rest of our army was reasonably okay in terms of not taking too much damage. The middle of vortex beast certainly uh, did so 
soak up a bit of it, and we saw those uh, units of uh, Savage Orc Boar Boy Biggins absolutely rip our units of uh, Hounds of Decay apart, which was impressive in and of itself, as a uh, few things have been easily able to contend with the Hounds. Certainly things like Blood Knights would rip them apart, but I, uh, I didn't expect so much out of the non-magic damage dealing Savage Orc Boar Boy Biggins, so good job to them. Uh, rest of this army will move over here. I don't like that because we're going to have to chase it down. Hmm. I wanted to attack this, but I guess we'll have to save that until next turn. We should chase this down. We may also want to not auto-resolve this so that we don't take further damage, which means I should probably do it between the episodes. And then we can move back to Barakavar, where doubtless these guys will attack us. Probably two armies at once. Or possibly more, depending on, well, probably a few extra lords. <clears throat> At any rate, anyway, I'm losing my voice, so this is probably a good time to uh, call the episode, so I'm going to call it here. Next time, we've got more fights. Festus will attack. We've got another siege somewhere, but I need to go get some water, so episode's done for now. Stay tuned for more Archie. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below. All glory to the algorithm, and thanks for watching.